Hello and welcome to Frotch on Fighting. My name is Carl Frotch, former four-time world boxing champion, just in case you didn't know. I've also been inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I don't talk about it that much, so I just thought I'd um, get it out there again in this episode, which is brought to you by Cobra Casino. So, Boatsi Aziz fought last night. Give me your thoughts on the fight. Yeah, Joshua Boatsi and Dan Aziz, what a great fight that was. For British boxing, it was Dan Aziz is the, the, the British champion, but this fight was for the WBA Eliminator, WBA World Title Eliminator. And that fight, that title is held well. You've got Bivol fighting. Dimitri Bivol is fighting Arta Betabiev. Um, and this will put them in position to fight the winner of that. The, whichever one of them monsters wins this fight, I'll be honest, it's a tough one that you probably don't want to take on. I'll talk about that in a minute. Back to Dan Aziz, Joshua Boatsy. What a fight. Great for boxing. Good for... Sky Sports and Boxer, because it was a great fight. It was, it was a wholesome fight. I mean, Dan Aziz, British champion. Joshua, Joshua Boatsy, former, I mean, he was an Olympic bronze medalist. And he's now looking to step up. Both of these guys are looking to step up at world level. Now, Joshua Boatsy did the business. He boxed well behind the jab from round one. He's more well-scored, Olympic bronze medalist. And he's got that boxing ability, that, that, that pedigree. And Aziz was getting in, trying to get close to him and didn't quite make that ground up early enough. So Boatsy and Aziz probably... They sheared a couple of the early rounds, but then Boatsy took over on my car from round four to about round eight and about five rounds on the spin where he won it quite clearly. As he, as he just wasn't busy enough, couldn't quite get to him. He was getting close, rolling the slip and the slide in, ducking and diving. He was rolling in and landing hooks and looking for the counter right hand. He was actually getting a jab off as well. He was dressed like the late, great, marvellous Marvin Hagler. He had these short shorts on. He had socks pulled up to his knees. He looked the part. He looked chiselled as well like Hagler, big thighs on him. And um, I was just impressed with the whole performance, but he was getting quite well beat on my scorecard up until about round nine, and he started to get to Joshua Boatsy. So then as he's closed the gap, he landed a couple of good shots in nine. I thought he won the round. Round 10, he was winning, and he got caught of a good shot, a right hand, I think it was, and he slipped. His feet went from under him on the print on the canvas. So the sponsor, I don't, I don't know if it, whether it the sponsor or if it was the, the Sky Sports sign, but... What's going off? Water on that and it slips. It, it kind of ruined it for me because Aziz was behind by about five rounds. But if you'd have won the last four, all of a sudden you've got a close fight on your hands. You never know how the judges are seeing it. On my card, if Aziz would have won the last four rounds, which it looked like he was doing, saying that Boatsy finished strong in the last, last couple of rounds. So I don't want to take anything away from Boatsy. But Aziz was getting himself back into the fight. It was exciting. It was edgy as seat stuff. And the fight did ebb and flow. The scorecards, I don't think, tell the story of the fight because... Boatsy was quite a clear winner. Unfortunately, they're not bound for um, Dan Aziz. And then he was chasing it. Then he got, he got dropped twice, he did in the end. But his feet did go from under him. The second time, his feet slipped. He got hit with a shot. His feet went from under him. And he landed on his face. He like, literally went face-planted. So it was a blatant slip. The referee counted. So the judges have to score a 10-8 round. But anyway, the right man won. Joshua Boatsy fought really, really well, as did Aziz. It was a great fight. Great for British boxing, like I've already said. But I was, I was honoured and privileged to be sitting there working for TalkSport and um, just lapping it up. The atmosphere, the fight, it was just it was just great. Really, really enjoyed it. The right man won. But the right man that won, Joshua Boatsy, has now got either Dimitri Bivol or Arta Betobiev waiting for him. And that is going to be a tough challenge and one that I'm not sure he wants to be getting straight in the ring with in his next fight. If I'm managing Joshua Boatsy, do I want to stick him in with Betabiev, who's just beaten Callum Smith, and he beat Anthony Yard? Or would I rather him fight an Anthony Yard and a Callum Smith as a stepping stone to bridge the gap between jumping up to the world title level? Betabiev's 40 years old, but he lives like a Spartan warrior. He's, he's, he's only had 20 or 21 fights. He's getting on. Great amateur career. Fought Usyk in the amateurs, actually. And, um, yeah, I just think that for... Joshua Boatsy to go straight in now at the deep end. This is a better be a beats Bivol. I mean, Dimitri Bivol, he beat Canelo Alvarez. That was an amazing fight. And Bivol is also such a, such a hard challenge. So like I said, Boatsy, great win. Dan Aziz, he'll grow from that fight. He'll learn from it. He'll come again. Who does he fight? I don't know what his plans are going to be, but if he's managed well, he's got a good career ahead of him, a good future. But Joshua Boatsy, I think that was a really good performance. He got the win, but now he's in a position now where does he go for broke? Does he roll the dice and, and, and challenge for that WBA title, which he's now mandatory for? Or does he sit back and, and be cute and be clever with his next fight? If I was him, I'd go for it. I think he's 30 years old now. I was around about that age when I fought for my title. 
And I think he's been around long enough. He's been waiting long enough. I think strike one while the iron's hot, go for it and try and become world champion. But um, we'll see what transpires. Let's see what the future holds. So Fury Usyk, the new date is set, May 18th. Yep, May 18th in Saudi Arabia. The fight has been rescheduled not that long after Fury got his cut and we've been, it's been announced that Fury Usyk fight is off. Two weeks to go. Everybody in the boxing world is absolutely gutted, including myself. I was dubious. I didn't think Tyson Fury was going to fight Usyk in February and it's transpired that he's not. But it seems for legitimate reasons. We've seen the cut now. I did want to see it. I said that I love a conspiracy, but I wanted to see the stitches. I wanted to see the cut. Don't look fresh to me. Doesn't look like an acute injury. The bruising's coming out. The swelling's going down. The stitching's all scabbed up. But regardless of what you think about that, he's got a cut and the fight is now rescheduled. Is it just convenient and is it good timing that they can reschedule the fight that quick and tell us May 18th and that's it? Hopefully that is the truth. It's a good move by the Saudis and, and by, by the promoters to announce it because we're all deflated. We're all thinking this fight's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. But anyway, this one, Feb 17th, it's been cancelled. It's been rescheduled for May. It's good news, but I'm still not 100% convinced. So what happens if then someone, if Tyson Fury goes again, oh, I'm not fighting now. What did you say? What was going to I think if, if one of them now pulls out, there's a £10 million compensation. Right. So the person that's left sat there, like Usyk now sitting around, and he's not, he might, may or may not be fighting, he'll get a £10 million compensation. That's not a bad bit of compensation, is it, for, not your, fighting. for your opponent pulling out? But, um, yeah, that's what we're hearing. But that's kind of, I don't know how relevant that is and what the truth is behind that, but I have read it somewhere that the... The, the guy that gets left weighted again gets a 10 million quid Brucey bonus. Good bit of Bunsen burner. 10 million. Yeah, we'll take that for sitting around. But um, hopefully, Usyk and Fury will be fighting May 18th. Fury has got a legitimate cut. We've seen it now. We, we, know, we know it happened. We're all still gutted about it. But what we're going to do is just onwards and upwards. But the landscape for the heavyweight division now could change dramatically. And these two fighters may never, ever meet in the ring. Let's hope they do. So you let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think the fight's going to happen? Do you think Tyson Fury's up to something? Do you think this cut's a bit dubious? Did it happen longer than what we're thinking? I think any time now that Tyson Fury's out of the ring waiting around, because I don't think his heart's in it like it should be anymore, just from, just from what I've seen and what he says and how he behaves, I just think he's made a lot of money. I'm not sure how serious he's about the sport. I, I think he's on the slide, which I've said before, and I'm not giving him stick. I've said before, he doesn't throw as many feints. He's been dropped, I think, four or five times in his, in, his, in his last few fights. And it's just like, where is he with his career? Where does he want to be? He's got plenty of money. He's achieved, he's achieved a lot in his career. And he's been a pro for a long time, over 15 years. So, I don't know. I just hope he still does want this fight. And I hope he still does really have that, that heart for it and that desire. Because if he does, it's going to be great. And we're going to get to find out who is the undisputed king of the heavyweight division. So Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark are finally announced. Are you happy to see that happening? Absolutely. Another great British title fight for the heavyweight British title owned by Fabio Wardley, a guy that's come from white collar boxing. No amateur pedigree, no experience. I think he's 29, 17 fights unbeaten, 16 knockouts. Um, Fraser Clark, heavyweight Olympic bronze medalist from Tokyo. I used to train with him at the EIS in Sheffield. Um, he was under Rob McCracken when I was obviously there. Rob trains the um, podium squad at the EIS in Sheffield. So I'm quite friendly with um, Fraser Clark. Good fighter. He's not been very busy. We expected bigger things. We expect him to move a bit quicker. But this heavyweight British title fight is a fight that I've been looking forward to. Fraser, these two needed to get together. They need to collide. And the winner of this can potentially go on and do big things. It's on Easter Sunday. Is it, is it March 31st? March 31st. Unusual. Bad blood. Unusual for a fight to be on Easter Sunday. I don't know what the, the, the thought process is behind that. But, um, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. I'm glad these two are getting in the ring and getting it on. And just all I can say on that one is may the best man win. So Conor Ben was back to action last night in Las Vegas. He certainly was. I never boxed in Las Vegas. Devastated. <laughs> Good luck to, well, well done to Conor Ben. He got his first 12 rounds in the bank, which is great for him. You need to do that as a pro when you've got world title ambition. So, yeah, he beat a formerly unbeaten guy, Peter Dobson. Yep. And, um, yeah, it was a good win. On the scorecards, he got every round almost. I mean, it was a wide, I don't think he won every round, but it was a wide points verdict for Conor Ben. And he's been going back and forth with one Javante Davis. 
They've been giving each other some slather. That's a bit of a Newark slang. On, on, <laughs> on social media. They've been having a go at each other. Now, Javante Davis is a weight division below Conor Ben, but he is one hell of a wrecking ball. What a fighting machine he is, Javante Davis. How do you and think what, that'd go then? And what a great fight. Listen, I don't want to start making predictions, but I don't think Conor Ben's ready to be jumping in with world title campaigners and people like Javante Davis. If you don't know him, if you've not heard of him, have a look at him. He's from Baltimore. Half his mates are either dead or in prison. Um, he beat Ryan Garcia, and everyone tough. thought it was going to be close. He's just, he's just great. I've seen him live a couple of times. And yeah, Javante Davis, Conor Ben, have been going back and forth. But I think the biggest fight Conor Ben's got on his hands is with the British Boxing Board of Control. He's going to come back to the UK. He's got a hearing soon. Hopefully that will go well. Hopefully he can get his name cleared. And hopefully he can get back with the British Boxing Board of Control, get his license, and start moving again in the fight world on UK soil, because that's what we want. But well done to Conor Ben. Great win for him. Onwards and upwards from here, hopefully. So this has been another episode of Frutch on Fight. I'm a little bit tired, so if I've not been as loud and as shouting, someone in the comments below said, why are you shouting? I like to shout. I like to talk loud and clear. But today is Sunday. It's Sabbath day. I'm tired. I've come back from London last night. Not had much sleep. The kids have been jumping on me at 7 in the morning. Got to bed at 4. But anyway. Are this you moaning? Been... I'm not moaning, no. When do I ever moan? Always smiling. But it's been a busy one. Hope you've been enjoying the content. I think you have. I've had some great feedback. If you've not already, hit subscribe. This channel is growing. And um, yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. So I will um, see you on the next episode of Froch I'm Fighting.